Hello, Mr. Simpson here with our video for Chapter 9, Section 3, Enthalpy. Here are the learning objectives. Please pause the video and copy these in your notes. First, Chapter 9, Video Energy Basics, I define thermochemistry. Uh, and I have talked about in class how we'll come back to this topic when we get to thermodynamics in a later chapter. Um, and so here you see that uh, thermochemistry is a branch of, thermo of chemical thermodynamics. Uh, and really what we're focusing in on here are re the relationships uh, between heat work and other forms of energy. So that'll be our focus in this uh, chapter of thermochemistry. Um, and then we'll get into some more when we get to thermodynamics uh, in a later chapter. In this section, we're going to talk about some concepts first as we um, build a foundation, working our way up to doing some calculations a little later in, the in this section. Uh, but first, let's talk about internal energy. So you can see what uh, internal energy is represented by here. It's the total of all possible kinds of energy present uh, in a substance. Uh, and this is either delta U or sometimes delta E can be symbolized with a capital E. Um, you can see here the relationship between internal energy, heat, and work is summarized by what's known as the first law of thermodynamics. And there's the equation there. So uh, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, so energy can be transported into a system or transferred out of a system. Again, going back to this concept of heat flow uh, and whether it's going in or out. So now we're just going to, uh, we're not just going to talk about heat. We're also going to talk about work and because those two concepts make up the internal energy. Okay, so uh, it, heat energy can be in, transported into the system, whether as we discussed already, heat is absorbed from the surroundings or the surroundings do work on the system. So in both those cases, when those are positive, uh, then the uh, internal energy is increasing. Uh, when those two concepts are negative, so the system releases heat to the surroundings, negative Q, or the system does work to the surroundings, negative W, then the, that's a decrease in eternal energy. So here's an example of what we're talking about here, uh, a qualitative example. Um, an internal combustion engine. So the system is gasoline and oxygen. The surroundings is the rest of the universe, including the uh, engine. So this reaction that's happening is the system, this combustion reaction that's happening with the gasoline and the oxygen. So the reaction is exothermic. It's giving off heat to the surroundings. And it uh, the reaction makes uh, pushes the piston. So it's doing work on the surroundings. So a negative uh, work value there. So the internal energy of the system decreases uh, because it's losing heat to the surroundings and it's doing work on the surroundings. Internal energy is known as a state function. Uh, and so you're going to hear this term in, when we get into uh, this part of the year um, and in thermochemistry and thermodynamics. So what it means to be a state function is it doesn't uh, matter uh, the, the, the process in which you get there doesn't matter. It's just that you're actually, uh, how you got there doesn't matter. It's just that you're there. So for example, this is an analogy your textbook uses. uses. If you were on the summit of Kilimanjaro at 5,895 meters, um, that's all that would, that's all that's, that, that's important. It doesn't matter. Did you hike up the mountain? Did you hike up the mountain in, in different paths? Did you parachute to the top of the mountain? How you got there isn't important. Um, what is, is, is that you're there. Okay, so internal energy is a state function, uh, as is enthalpy. So uh, this is actually um, uh, an important concept for, one, for us and one we're going to use a lot in this uh, chapter and beyond. So it's the sum of the system's internal energy and the product of its pressure and volume. So this is also a state function. <clears throat> because of that, we're not going to focus in on individual enthalpies. We're going to focus in on changes in enthalpy. Again, the heat flow that's happening. Um, <clears throat> since we typically, uh, since we typically um, do reactions in, under consistent conditions, uh, atmospheric pressure and no external pressure, or you open containers and things like that, um, <clears throat> that we can say. That, that allows us to uh, be able to say that uh, the delta H 
is basically equal to um, the heat flow. All right, so um, the heat flow and the enthalpy change for the are are equal in these in these processes. Okay, so it becomes the most convenient way for us to discuss and determine and talk about heat uh, with regards to enthalpy. We've seen lots of chemical reactions so far. Well, now we're going to start to see thermochemical equations where we um, identify or give some sort of thermochemical data in the reaction as well. So you can see one way in which we do that here. Um, so uh, what you see here is a pretty typical balanced uh, reaction that we've seen a, a bunch of, but you can see there's an additional piece of information here. Um, so it also tells us some thermochemical data. It gives us the change in enthalpy for this process. All right, so now a couple important things here. We've talked about uh, the importance of understanding whether a process or reaction is exothermic or endothermic, okay? Um, so, as I mentioned a minute ago, that uh, delta H and Q are the same, so we know that if a system loses energy or, or um, releases energy to the surroundings, that's a negative Q, okay? So, for along those same lines, an exothermic reaction is going to have a negative delta H value, okay? An endothermic reaction would have a positive delta H value. So really important here that we remember and can associate the appropriate sign with the exothermic and endothermic um, notation. Additionally, if a process written in one direction is, in this case, exothermic, if I reverse this reaction, and this reaction was the other... Uh, went the other way, okay, the delta H would still be the same quantity, but now it would be, uh, it would be positive, okay? That'll be important concept when we get to um, Hess's law here in, in a minute. Let's get to our first calculations uh, in this section. And we are going to calculate the um, standard enthalpy for a uh, for a reaction, and we're going to to do that, we're going to use the standard enthalpy of formations for the the um, substances in a reaction. Um, real quick here, uh, this notation here um, is uh, indicates standard state. Okay, so um, if we're talking about heat and energy. Um, going in or, or into the system or leaving the system, there's also something that goes on there with the states uh, that the substances are in. So when it's in standard state, then we know it's um, at standard temperature and pressure. Um, it's whatever state that that substance would be in in there. So, um, you know, for uh, standard temperature and room pressure, and uh, standard pressure and room temperature, um, H2O is in the, in the liquid form. Okay, so if I had H2O in the ice form, then energy would have to go into convert, changing it from ice to liquid before uh, it would react and things. So um, you're going to see those different values based on different states. All right, the work here is we're going to, like I said, we're going to use these um, standard uh, enthalpy or formation values. And you see I have a table down here. That I'll reference in a second, but it's basically the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Okay, so uh, if I have a reaction like this and I'm asked to um, determine the, the change in enthalpy, then I'm going to, um, and there's actually one missing here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. HNO3 aqueous is negative 207.4 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up an expression in which I um, am gonna take the products minus the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Now we have to be careful here, we don't forget how the stoichiometric relationship is going to affect that. So I have to take that into account uh, when I do this as well. Uh, I also wanna point out one other thing. I know it's this, uh, 
table I have here is a little difficult to read, but you'll see here that um, Br2, Cl2. So these are these are heats of formation values. Um, so these elemental gases, uh, you know, that don't require um, energy to 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 be added or removed to form, you see they'll have zero values in there. So um, that's for anything that just kind of is naturally occurring. All right, so let's get to our setup here. So our uh, delta H is going to equal products minus reactants. So it's going to be the sum of two times the heat of formation value for the HNO3. plus one times uh, NO gas. Um, and so let me find the NO gas here, which is uh, right there, 90.25, uh, minus the sum of uh, the reactants, so three times the NO2 gas, which is right below that, 33.18, plus the uh, H2O liquid, which is right here, negative 285.830. Okay, so we'll sum that up and we will get our um, standard enthalpy change for this reaction. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to work that through. And um, when we do that, we get a delta H value of negative 138.3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so um, obviously this uh, is an exothermic reaction since that delta H value is negative. Uh, one, one correction here, the unit here should be kilojoules, not kilojoules per mole, kilojoules there. All right, so let's go on to talk about Hess's law. Okay, so Hess's law tells us that, um, again, the idea of it being a state function is, I, I'm not really concerned in how we get there, but just the fact of, of the final product. Actually, um, most reactions are a series of steps. Um, and so Hess's law tells us that if I know the steps that are taken um, in a chemical reaction, all I have to do is take the sum of those uh, changes in enthalpy to get the change of enthalpy of the um, overall uh, reaction. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we have to do some work first. Okay. So we are allowed, we have to manipulate these steps um, again. Uh, given here, we have to manipulate these steps so that um, my substances cancel out or add up to give me this final reaction. Okay, um, now manipulate the steps. We are allowed to do two things we can uh, reverse a reaction. Okay, um, now if you reverse the reaction, you have to make sure you uh, change the sign of delta H. OK, um, at the end, we're just going to add these delta H values up. But as I manipulate these steps, I have to make sure I do the same thing to the delta H value. Or when I go to add it, I'm not going to get the right answer. OK, so you were allowed to turn a reaction around. And therefore, if you do that, you have to change the sign of delta H. You are also allowed to um, multiply um, by some coefficient. Again, if you do that, uh, you must multiply the delta H by the same, okay, by the same value. All right, so let's take a look at how this would work. Uh, so the way I like to start here is I like to, so this is the reaction we're trying to get, the highlighted reaction. So I like to go right down the line. Um, so for example, uh, we need C3H8 on the left hand side in the reactants and we need one uh, mole of it okay so as i look in my steps this is a good place to start because C c3h8 is only located right there now currently in that step it's on the wrong side 
So that means I have to take this reaction and I have to reverse it. C3H8 gas yields 3 carbon plus 4H2 gas. And as I said, really important, I need to make sure that I change the sign of my delta H. Okay, so this reaction no longer exists. It's now the one in red. All right, so I'm going to go right down the line here. Next, I'm going to look at O2. Now, I'm actually going to skip over O2 here um, because as I look here, O2 shows up in two different steps, right, here and here. Uh, so if I can manipulate things that only show up in one step, that'll be easier for me. So uh, I'm going to skip the O2s for now and hope that they just kind of fix themselves uh, along the way. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, three CO2, so this will work because CO2 is only in the products. Okay, now the issue here is I only have one CO2 in the products. I need three CO2, so I need to multiply everything in this reaction by three. Not, I can't just multiply the CO2 by three. I have to multiply everything by three, including the delta H value. So my delta H here becomes um, 393.3 times 3. I get a negative 1179.9 kilojoules. All right, one more uh, to do. So H2O, again, that will work because it's here. Uh, again, this reaction no longer because I just made an adjustment to it. Um, so here, similar to what I needed to do uh, in the step prior, I need to multiply everything here um, by two, or, I'm sorry, by four. So I get four, oops, I get four H2 gas plus two O2 gas, four times a half is two, uh, yields four H2O gas. And my delta H value here is going to be 241.8 times 4, or a negative 967.2 kilojoules. Okay, so we think we may be in good shape here, but I have to check it by adding up and... Um, canceling out substances to make sure that I get my final reaction. So let's take a look here. Um, I've got my C3H8, that's good. So I have three carbons on the right in this step and on the left in this step, so they cancel out, okay? I have four H2 gases on the right in this step and on the left in this step, so they cancel out. Um, my O2s are on the same side of the equation, so I have three O2s and two O2s that gives me 502 on the left, which is correct. So as you can see here, what's left, what hasn't been canceled out is C3H8 plus 502 yields 3CO2 plus 4H2O. So I have successfully manipulated those steps to get my balanced equation um, that I'm looking for. Now all I have to do is add up these delta H values. Assuming that I did everything um, that I uh, to my delta H value that I did to my step. So when I reverse it, I changed the sign. When I multiplied it, I multiplied the delta H value. The math here then becomes pretty straightforward. I just need to add those values up, and we get a final answer of a negative 2,043.3 kilojoules. And again, this is exothermic. Okay, so that wraps up section three on enthalpy. Um, really, the focus uh, in our problem solving is going to be Hess's Law problems and uh, calculating delta H using um, the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants from the heat of formation values. That's where we'll spend the majority of our problem solving time in this unit. So um, now we have a chance to do lots of practice along the way.